Right, let's talk about software. Who's heard of Audacity? Yes. Okay, Audacity is our friend. Audacity is cool. Uh, that's where you can get it from. Um, there's actually, uh, there's been a new version of Audacity out for about three years, so it's not really new at all, is it? That, what I'm trying to say is that that's a picture of the old version, the new version is slightly slick looking. But Audacity basically, uh, free software, allows you to record directly, it allows you to edit, so if you've sort of made a, an embarrassing noise here, you could just edit it out and no one would know it was there. But it also allows you to do various other post-production, we'll talk about compression in a minute, that'll be exciting, so get ready. And it also allows you to have multiple tracks, so you can blend different recordings together. That's called mixing. So it's a pretty cool piece of software. One slightly annoying thing about Audacity is uh, you have to download this thing called the, M the, the lame MP3 encoder. Are there any geeks in, this, in, the, in, the, in the room today? Okay. Just, you didn't hear me say that, so I'll just move on to the next thing. Okay, basically, everyone familiar with MP3? Yeah, okay. This is the technology that compresses a sound file. So that it's like a tenth of its normal size, but it sounds almost the same as a WAV file. WAV being an uncompressed sound file. And uh, because it's um, proprietary patented software, people that make free software, like the people that make Audacity, cannot include it in their software. So they have to give you instructions of where to get it and do it yourself. <laughs> Talking about other bits of software, who, who has a Mac? Who's Mac? Okay, it's about half of you. Presumably the other half from Windows, yeah? Okay. Uh, well, there might be Linux people in here? Could be. Um, if you've got a Mac, you've got this, which is GarageBand. And GarageBand <coughs> makes great podcasts. You have to, it takes a bit of a learning curve to get used to it, and like a lot of Mac things, uh, it hides a lot of power and complexity. So you can be a geek and still get on with GarageBand if you know where to drill down and do all your little tweaks and stuff. But same idea, this concept of multiple tracks, this is a recording. If you want to edit, you sort of double-click that and it appears bigger down here and you can zoom in and just edit bits out. So it's, it's pretty good, uh, GarageBand. If you're a complete audio geek like me, you might use something like Logic Express, which is like GarageBand on steroids. Again, this is Mac only. But again, this concept of tracks, uh, all sorts of filters and clever stuff down here. Um, but to be honest with you, Audacity is probably just the way to go. The other thing I want to talk about is just moving away from like the recording software onto where you will put your podcast itself. Now I think uh, words of WordPress, fantastic. Two flavours of WordPress, of course. WordPress.com is the online version, isn't it? Yes. And WordPress.org, if you're a geek, you can go there and download a big pile of code and put it on your own, own server and have your own instance of WordPress under your own domain. Um, I would recommend you do it that way if you can, but WordPress is a great blogging platform and the reason that uh, podcasters love WordPress is because WordPress has these things called plugins. It's a big war going on. Some people prefer PodPress, some people prefer PowerPress. I personally am not sure which I prefer. And what that does, it helps you as a podcaster because it lets you embed a nice little player into each post of the thing that you've recorded, your MP3 file. But the really cool thing about it is it automatically creates the RSS feed for the podcast for you without you having to do anything. So you don't have to worry about okay, it. Okay, so now feed burner. Who's heard of feed burner? Excellent. So there's no need for this talk, really, is there? You really know this stuff. Um, feed burner basically takes an RSS feed and like supercharges it, basically, and gives you stats. So I recommend that the feed that you get from PodPress, you put through feed burner. Feed burner is owned by Google now, so you just get yourself a Google account, and it's feedburner.google.com. And they can set all this up. Um, it gives you stats. How many? That's a particularly successful one of mine. Uh, how many people are subscribed? Not terribly accurate. I, I always think it slightly underreads. You know, like, you know, but nevertheless, it's, it's pretty good. It also tells you how many item downloads you've got, which I think is more meaningful because it's a bigger number. <clears throat> um, so that's so that's feed burner. Uh, is anyone familiar with an RSS feed? Can we skip this slide, or does anyone want me to? Silence. I will interpret that as I wish to know more about RSS feeds. Okay, the idea behind an RSS feed is this concept of an item. That's, in your case, it's a blog post with a podcast attached. And the latest item is available to people who subscribe to it. Subscribe. It doesn't involve money. It just involves a bit of technology. And the only difference between uh, a podcast RSS feed and a non-podcast RSS feed is that each of these items has what's known as an enclosure which is simply the MP3 file. It just points to where it is on the web. So when things like iTunes 
um, is used to subscribe to a podcast, all it's doing is it's looking at that latest item, has it changed, has it changed, yes, where's the enclosure, there it is, download it, so the person can listen to it locally on their computer, that's all it's doing effectively. So that's the idea of an R RSS is one of these annoying things that a lot of people go, oh, it's an RSS feed. But it's, just, it's basically just a text file that says that computers can read. Um, right, I wanted to put this slide in because I've got to put it in previously. And it's basically where you want to host your media files. Now, when I say media files, uh, your MP3 files, um, take a look at libsyn.com. Uh, that is a very popular hosting platform. Uh, they also create an RSS feed for you. So you've got a choice of whether you use their RSS feed or the one that comes out of um, WordPress. It's kind of up to you. Another one to look at is it's, it's a bit more than a hosting company. Soundcloud.com. Take a look at that. Um, it might be a very good platform. They're quite new. It might be a very good platform for um, starting podcasting because it makes it very easy for you. Upload it. I think it gives you an RSS feed as well. So have a look at SoundCloud. And if you're a geek like me, just go to someone like One and One and get yourself a dedicated server. But I would only recommend that to people that are like doing it professionally for other clients and things like that. Because you can get a dedicated server on a, like a 100 megabit pipe, and that's great for hosting podcasts. But I would take a look at those two. You don't have to use a third party company. What you can do is uh, just, you can upload the MP3 files to the same server that your WordPress site is on. But be aware that if your, po if your podcast becomes popular, the downloads might start to affect the performance of the website. When that happens, I would look at hosting them somewhere else. It's getting the files off the server where the website is. So that's where the media files live. This will become clear. I'm seeing confused faces. I'm seeing faces that say, I don't understand what's going on here. Anyone else understand what's going on here? Well, at least it's quite funny, but I don't understand what's going on. Um, it'll all come clear in the end, hopefully. So, um, yeah, do, do consider these, but you don't have to use them from the office, what I'm trying to say.